Hi, welcome back to Mason Chemistry. This is Nuclear Chemistry Neptunian Decay Series number two. We're going to go from Neptunian to Thallium, right? Now, we're going to do a, just a slightly different route. That's why I have the Series 2 here. So remember that the alpha particle is the alpha decay emission, a 4-HE nucleus or 4-2-alpha, which is called an alpha particle, is removed from the parent atom to change the element into a different element. We're going to use the equation AZX yields A minus 4, Z minus 2, Y plus our alpha particle, right? So A represents the atomic mass unit, or AMU, which is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. Z represents the atomic number, which represents the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. And Y would be the new element that it gets changed into. Okay, if you see a B or beta symbol, that means beta decay. Beta decay or emission is 0 minus 1 E or 0 minus 1 beta. A neutron is converted into a proton, changing the element into another element and releasing a beta particle. Again, we're going to use this equation, AZX yields AZ plus 1Y plus our beta particle, right? Now remember that A represents the atomic mass unit, which is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. Z represents the number of protons, which is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom, or the atomic number. Y represents the brand new element it gets changed into. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take the direct path. So, Neptunium-237 undergoes alpha decay and becomes protactinium-233. Protactinium undergoes beta decay and changes a neutron into a proton and makes uranium-92, which is going to be uranium-233-92. Uranium-233 undergoes alpha decay and it becomes thorium-229. Thorium-229 undergoes alpha decay and becomes radium-225. Okay, Radium undergoes beta decay and becomes actinium, right? And actinium undergoes alpha decay and becomes francium. Francium-221. Francium-221 undergoes alpha decay and becomes astacine-217. Astacine-217 undergoes alpha decay and becomes bismuth-213. Bismuth-213 undergoes beta decay and becomes polonium-213. Polonium-213 undergoes alpha decay and becomes lead-209. Lead 209 undergoes beta decay. That means it's going to change a neutron into a proton and it's going to become bismuth 209. Bismuth 209 undergoes alpha decay and becomes thallium 205. And thallium 205 is stable, so it doesn't, it's not going to decay any further. Okay, let's look at these half-lives here real quickly. Um, Neptunium-237 has a half-life of 2.1 times 10 to the 6 years. Very long time. Protactinium-233 has a, uh, a half-life of 27 days. Uranium-233 has a half-life of 159,200 years. Thorium-229 has a half-life of 7,340 years. Radium-225 has a half-life of of 15 days. Actinium-225 has a half-life of 10 days. Francium-221 has a half-life of 5 minutes. Acetine-217 has a half-life of 32.3 seconds. 213 bismuth has a half-life of 46 minutes. Polonium-213 has a half-life of 30 days. Lead 209 has a half-life of 3.25 minutes. Bismuth 209 has a half-life of 1.9 times 10 to 19 years. That's an immense long period of time. 
And then finally, thallium 205 has a half uh, has no half life because it's stable. It's in its end game, so it's as far as it's going to go. Well, that's it for this lesson. You guys be snarly. I will see you back here at Moosing Chemistry.